Good afternoon, folks. Let me know when you're on. Just come on in and say hello. Um, let me go ahead and share this broadcast while I'm... Just drop me a comment on the post when you come on in. I'm just going to share and then we'll get right back in. Just drop me a comment on the post when you come on in. All right. That's not where I want to be. Yeah. It's not allowing me to share it as me. Let me go back here and try again. Here we go. All righty. Here we go. Now I can. Excuse me. Share to a group. Okay. I think I got it. Yep, I think I've got it now. Okay. All right. We're ready. I'm ready to roll. You all were. Good afternoon, Rachel. God bless you, honey. How are you doing too? Doing good. Doing good. Um, all righty. Let me just get this off here. How do I get this off? There we go. Here we go. All right. Figure that one out. Okay, let's get going. I think we've got a few people on, so let's get started and the rest will um, come on as, as, as um, time allows, okay? Hey, Apostle Guy, how are you? All righty. Let's just have a word of prayer. Thanksgiving is right up close to us. We're headed there quickly. Hello, Adele. Greetings to you too. <coughs> no, I got a little tickle in my throat. Okay. Hello, Carol. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rachel. Good afternoon. Thank you, people. All right. Father, we just thank you right now, God. Father, we reminded even in this season coming up that there's more than just one day a year to be thankful of. And so today, I thank you that we're all here today, that we're alive, we're well, God, in the name of Jesus. Everything may not be aligning the way we want it to be, but we have life in our body. We have strength. We have you. We have the ability to always do better. And for that, we are grateful for. We're grateful to have you, Papa, in our lives, oh God, to know, Father, that we're in the land of the living and we still have impact to make and things to do and anointing to 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 um to share and and just to impart to people and to and and just to bring hope and revelation and to receive from you father so we thank you for this day oh god for that you have made lord and we thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to just be online sharing with each other praying for each other and just loving on each other abba have your way in this place today have your way daddy in jesus mighty name good afternoon Nina, God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. You know, I was thinking about Thanksgiving coming up next week. And, you know, and I'm thinking, it, you know, it, it's it's a once a year thing. And we all are happy and we gather around food and we eat and we enjoy and we, and we have a good time. But, you know, how can we live in this same spirit of thanks every day of the year? How can we do that? You know, or, or is Thanksgiving or any other holiday, a dread for you? Do you dread that holiday? Because some people do, and for different reasons. Some people, it's just that they, um, it's just that they, they, they feel they feel a little weak. They may feel um, depressed, and that the holidays don't mean to you what it means to them, and vice versa. Sometimes it's a time that they they feel alone. They feel not welcome. They feel all kinds of things go through them. So people have different different ways that they deal with a holiday. You know, sometimes they're overwhelmed, overworked, tired, or maybe it's a dread seeing everyone. They're going to gather together. Now I'm going to see all this family and these people, and I'm going to compare myself. I'm not, I'm a failure. I haven't done as much as as I, I could have accomplished, and that one did more than me. And you know, the comparison things start. 
or, you know, we might be saying in my family, we just don't get along that well too long. Sooner or later, somebody's going to, there's going to be some drama coming up from somebody. And I just like to skip the whole thing this year. So we have different reasons and we have different ways. And all of us have different reasons why we want to celebrate or why we don't. Um, but this isn't just about a holiday, okay? You know, we don't get to choose who our family is. But we do get to use the power and authority through Jesus Christ to be a positive, godly influence to them. You know, there's more people watching you than you know. When you profess to be a Christian, there's more people taking an eyeball at you than you could ever know or think of. And so, you know, we want to we want to be sure that we're conducting ourselves in a manner that is pleasing to our Abba, to our father. OK, sometimes you feel I can't. I, ju I just can't, you know, and the feeling to give up comes up, whether it's for Thanksgiving or something else in your life. I just want to give up. I'm just tired. I don't want to do this anymore. I remember, you know, going through the, the, the rehab therapy for my knees, you know, and it was so in the first month, it was, it was so excruciating, you know, and I keep pushing myself. I keep talking to myself, you know, encouraging myself in the Lord, using a lot of scriptures to, for me to hold on to and just to keep going. You know, I'm still in the process of the therapy and some, you know, I, like I wanted to, to be whole yesterday. I wanted to be well right away, but there was some very, for the first month was a very painful, excruciating month. I just wanted to leave. I wanted to stop, but I, you don't get to stop. You get, you start talking to yourself. Listen, I used to hold my foot and I used to get, come on, girl, we got to do this thing. Come on. You know, I'm getting myself prepared for the pain you know, before I go in and the exercise and stuff. And I'm going, come on, girl, you can do this. And I'm talking to my, and sometimes you talk to yourself like that, or you talk to your, 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 your whatever part or whatever is not going right, you know, when you, it, 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 but is that enough? You know, is that enough to say, you know, talk to yourself or say, look, God got you. God got this. Is that enough when you've done all you can and still feel like it's not enough, even for the job, even for being a mom, even for being a member of the family, whatever it is, it's not enough. You come home, you're tired. You feel guilty because you don't feel like cooking. You don't feel like playing with the kids, Mary, your man and your wife cooked or whatever. I don't know, but you came home and you feel like I got to be engaged with this family and I'm tired. I got to cook. I got to clean. I got to do something. Maybe you're a woman and you're thinking, I, I work too and I got to come home and I got to do all this or I'm at home all day. And you think because you went out to work that I'm not doing anything. We all have different scenarios uh, that can bring guilt to us. But, but you know, guilt is not going to do much for you. It's not from God. Guilt is going to have you coming up short all the time. God encourages us. When that frustration sets in, you know, pretty soon all the stress that leads to anxiety and depression. And then there's a glimpse that uh, of hope. And then you start it all over again. You know, living a life of thankfulness is a supernatural life. It's a supernatural life. We are to be living by the grace of the living God. It's the only way. First Thessalonians 5, 18 says, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. It's the will of God through Christ Jesus for you. You said you've been saved by the blood of Jesus. You've been saved. He saved you. He sanctified you. Well, then this is his will that you live every day in thankfulness. There's something that you can find to be thankful for. Hello, Apostle Harold. God bless you, man of God. I pray you're doing well today and thanks for hopping on. So why would the word say in all circumstances, if some of those circumstances won't always be great, they won't always be grand, happy, awesome moments, but the scriptures teaches us to stay thankful because the enemy is going to bring some things your way that will want to prevent your happiness. You have to understand this is a fight. This is a, is a game the enemy's playing with you. Let me see if she's going to understand or he's going to understand that what they have is more than they know and they can really be thankful. You know, the one one thing that will drive him nuts is to stay thankful. You can literally drive the enemy away from you by staying thankful, staying in the presence of God. So give thanks. It may not change your circumstances right now, but it will surely change how you see it. It'll change how you view it. It'll change your focus. Your, your eyes are on Jesus. We keep our eyes on Jesus in everything, but doubly when under attack. Let me tell you something. When you're under attack, when your body's not working properly, when your home is not going properly, when the finances are not aligned, when your job is not going, that is the time to double focus, double up and keep your eyes upon Jesus. You know, sometimes it seems like no matter how much 
you know, no matter what we do, no matter how much we, we do, it's never enough. Let me tell you a story. Now, you know, it's not a real story, but it makes the point, okay? A large dog walks into a butcher shop and he's carrying a purse in his mouth. He, he puts the purse down and he sits in front of the meat cage. What is it, boy? The butcher jokingly asks. Want to buy some meat? Woof, barks the dog. Hmm, says the butcher. What kind? Liver, bacon, steak? Woof. As soon as he says steak, the dog said woof. He interrupts him. And so the butcher says, and how much steak? Half a pound, one pound. Woof. Okay, one pound. The amazed butcher wraps up the meat and finds the money in the dog's purse. As the dog leaves, he decides to follow him. The dog enters an apartment building, you know, climbs to the third floor, begins scratching at the door. With that, the door swings open and an angry man starts screaming at the dog and shouting at him. Stop, yells the butcher. He's the most intelligent animal I've ever seen. Intelligent, says the man. This is the third time this week he's forgotten in his key. <laughs> now this, you know, it's fictional, but the point is be thankful. Okay. He wasn't thankful. You contrast that to Pam's story who worked in a downtown Chicago um, building. And every morning she encountered a heavy set middle-aged woman in a shabby coat, soliciting spare change in front of an old brick church. She greeted everyone with a, with a smile and a pleasant good morning. Pam almost always gave her something. After almost a year of this routine, the woman in the shabby coat disappeared and Pam wondered what had happened to her. Then one beautiful day, she was in front of the church again, still wearing the, sh the same shabby coat. As Pam reached into her purse for the usual donation, the woman stopped her. Thank you for helping me all those days, she said. You won't see me again because I've got a job. With that, she reached into her bag and she had handed Pam a wrapped package. She had been standing at her old spot waiting, not for a handout, but for the people who recognized, who she recognized so that she could say thank you with a donut for helping me all these years. That woman was thankful. That old man was not. So you see, we have to find reasons to be thankful. She was thankful to all the people that blessed her. Now she could have been one that says, hmm, you know, I, I, I don't need them anymore. I got what I need and just go on her merry way. See the same story in Luke 17, 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. On us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus's feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered. Answered, were not 10 cl cl uh, cleansed? Were, where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give him give God praise except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. The first lesson that we learn in this season is not about a turkey. It's not about the pilgrims who came and, you know, the people who first landed and they came and they were thankful for food. And so they give thanks with some turkey and whatever. It's not about that. It's not about we're going to gather with family and we're all going to feast and we're going to have a good time. No, the, the first point of the message today is be thankful, even if you're in difficult circumstances. You can always have trials coming your way. You choose to be resentful or you choose to be thankful. God has given you a choice and the scriptures are very clear. We have a choice today. And if I were you, I would choose thankfulness because there's a blessed way to live with thankfulness. It doesn't matter how much you have or how little you have. You know, God is always with us. This kind of thankfulness is called faith. We start with 10 men who have the worst disease of their day. The physical ramifications are horrendous. Leprosy attacks the body. It leaves sores. It leaves missing fingers, missing toes, damaging limbs. In many cases, the initial pain of leprosy gives way to something more terrible than that. A loss of sensation in nerve endings. You know, it, 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 it leading to, to more damage to more body parts. The disease can take 30 years to run its course. And in that time span, entire limbs can simply fall fall off. It's a most horrible disease. We have nearly an impossible task in trying to fathom what it was like 2,000 years ago when medical treatment as we know it today was almost non-existent. Understand that this what this leper was going through when he turned back to be thankful. Beth Moore in her, in her book about the one and only tells of an occasion she had to be near a modern day leper, leper colony. Something within her had always wanted to minister to a leper colony but her trip overseas had given her the 
the first opportunity to be near such a place. Let me tell you, she walked by the entrance several times and she saw those who were suffering. She begged herself for a chance to go inside, but she couldn't simply, she simply couldn't move to go inside. It was so horrific. She couldn't go in. The reason the smell overwhelmed her. She could not work up a stomach to go inside the colony. She could not bear the thought of witnessing for the Lord, but at, at you know, but at the same time becoming violently ill as she faced human beings already so aware that they are different. This Thanksgiving, you may see people that are different, people that are not saved, people that will curse, whatever. We all got different ones in our family, but we didn't choose them. God, God chose us to be in the family that we're in. What he's assigned us to, he chose you to give you salvation, to be a light to them. Show your thankfulness, show your love, show his love. The trip passed and she was not able to go inside. And, you know, and I think we gained a new appreciation of how bad this disease must have been in those days, you know, before we, we, that Christ was walking the street. It wasn't just the grotesque damage or the attack or all that. It wasn't just the loud cries, the attack of our hearing. No, it was the smell, the rotting, decay, decaying flesh, overwhelming even, even you know, our, our very sense and smell. Can you imagine that? I'm just painting a picture of how good we have it today. The emotional pain of a leper, however, must have been even worse than the physical pain. He was removed from his family, from his community. There could be no contact whatsoever with nobody from his children, his grandchildren, none. Immediately removed, his wife would not be allowed to kiss him goodbye. He would not have allowed it, you know, for fear that she too would become afflicted. Lepers tended to roam together outside the gates, you know, looking for food, begging for assistance from a great distance. They didn't go close, learning, learning to yell in loud voices so people could hear them both from the need to warn others and to beg people to cross the other way. Because as a leper, they had to say leprosy. They had to let people know when they're coming down and walk on the other side away from people. Come on. It was horrible. But this one leper in the midst of going through all of that was not resentful of what he went through, but was thankful. And there were nine others that chose not to be thankful. What does that say? 90% of us are not grateful for what God is doing in our lives. 90% of us are not grateful for life. We're not grateful for what God is doing. You know, you, you, come on. This is a time for us to, to be, be thankful and be grateful, you know, and, 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 and be, be grateful for what God is doing. Is there a more potent lesson for us on this Thanksgiving week? <clears throat> we can't wait until the, the problems are over to start walking in faith. We got to start now. We can't put conditions. I, I, I'm going through this. I, I, I'll, I'll talk to them when I'm doing better. I'll do this or that when I'm doing better. I declare over you that you will not be one of those, that you will be one that will say, Father God, as long as there's breath in my body, there's life in my bones, I will yet praise the Lord. I will be thankful to you. I, as Apostle Harold says here, he says, I choose thankfulness when I said, which are you going to choose? That's what we need to, all of us need to be making that, that point made known to all, to all the enemy. All of us need to be typing in there. I choose thankfulness. I choose, you know, the more you say it, the more you do it, the more you repeat it, repetition becomes, you know, becomes who you are. Listen, it works good and bad. You know, people repeat all those music that, that leads them to destruction and eventually it just becomes normal for them. When we repeat all that God is speaking over our lives, it becomes normal for us. When when we listen to worship music all the time, it becomes normal for us. We got to choose thankfulness and, and let it become normal for us. Okay. We, we can't say I'm so caught up with bills. The economy is putting me in bills. I can't tithe. No, we got to tithe and then we'll catch up on our bills. I choose to obey the word of God, whether I have bills or not. That's a life I've been living and it's proven worthwhile because God doesn't lie. Okay. We can't just say, Lord, if you'll just solve this issue with my family, <clears throat> if you'll heal my body, if you'll do this to me, then I'll go to church. No, you can't put conditions in God. Instead, God places a demand on your faith. <clears throat> One second, I only have gum here. I'm going to put a piece of gum in my mouth to help with this. <clears throat> I didn't take any allergy, allergy um, tablet. I forgot. Now I got the post nasal drip. But in spite of that, we're going to make it. Amen. Amen. Yes, Akusa. Yes, Apostle Guy. We choose thankfulness. And so, you know, God might say, love me despite your disease. Obey me despite your lack of talent or your lack of resources. 
follow me now, despite the depression. Say no to temptation while it is still difficult, while you're craving it, while you're yearning for it. Praise me in the darkest of nights, in your worst circumstances, in the times when depression is hitting you low. Praise me now. This is this family is the nature of our God. <clears throat> this is the nature of our God. He loves you so much. He'll give you the opportunity to be thankful when nothing about your circumstances give you the motivation to even want to be thankful. God will give you opportunities. Normalize thankfulness. Come on. All right. This, it would be more like a business arrangement if, if you tell him, when you do this, I'll do that. No, this is not about that. This is not a business. Some of us are, are in horrible circumstances right now. And what awaits us today, this week, is a force, you know, is a forcing of the question, will you be thankful despite the difficult circumstances? Will you choose to be thankful? If our answer is yes, then we will have experienced faith and faith will move mountains. Faith is the currency of heaven and it will purchase for you what you cannot purchase with money. You, it will. It will get that for you, I'm telling you. He's a good, good God. The second thing is be thankful in the work of God's goodness. Be thankful in the work of God's goodness. This kind of thankfulness is worship. Worship. One of the men came back to Jesus and he praised God. He was thankful. He was public about it. He was loud. He wasn't shy at all. Why was he so loud? This guy had been forced to yell for as long as he had had leprosy. Had it been years, he probably yelled so long. He didn't know how to come to the Lord quietly. He'd been used to yelling at this point. Could be that. Or even in a normal voice. When he came back and fell at Jesus' feet, he was just louder than a normal person. And he was praising God this week. Be sure to take time to acknowledge God for his goodness in you. Be sure to actually be thankful. Be sure to gather everyone up for prayer of thanksgiving. That's a real prayer of thankfulness. Don't miss the opportunity to worship God this week and be loud about it. And you know what? Pick, pick one or two people that you have been really wanting to thank, uh, to praise, to pray, you know, God to pray for, to ask God to move in their life. Pick them and just begin from now until Thanksgiving every day. Make it a point of lifting them up. Make If they're close to you, make it a point of calling them. And just encouraging them, just saying something nice to them that would uplift their day, something that would help them to have something to say, this was the only thing possibly that came good. You may be the only hug that person may have. You may be the only voice, kind voice that they may have heard. You may be the only one that they ever felt is reaching out to them. You don't know what people are going through. And you know what? If you're going through, then do it for somebody. Because what you make happen for someone, God will make happen for you. All right? Do it for somebody. You know, in this busy season of preparing and doing all we can, we're giving out turkeys this week, this Saturday at our church, and, and a box of, of sides. Now, it's that's a lot of work, going and purchasing them and running around and doing everything. That's a lot of work, I'm telling you, people of God. But guess what? We, we You know, we cannot sit back and say, that's a lot of work, I'm not going to do it. The family that receives that turkey in that box is going to be ever so thankful and grateful that God put it in our hearts to be his hand and his feet. We're not giving it to him. We, God is giving it to them. You know why? Because God used us to be his hands and feet to bless those people as God is going to use you to be the hands and feet to bless them. All the people that donated were the ones that were God hands and feet to help us bless these people. Come on, we're running around this week, purchasing items, packing them up, being ready to greet God's people, to pray for them. That's right, Apostle Guy. His goodness is running after me. I love that song. God's goodness is running after you. Every fiber of your body, I decree that over you. And everyone on this line that is in need of prayer, that is in need of, of a health, that is sick or whatever, I declare that the goodness of God is running after you. It's running through every fiber of your body. If you're going through mental torture, it's going through your mind and it's renewing you. If you're going through physical illness, it's going through your body and it's renewing it and it's restoring it. Now, and it's bringing it back to right standing and you're walking up rightly with the king of glory the king of kings and the lord of lords the great i am the mighty man of war i thank you father i decree right now that healing is the children's bread and you all are eating it whatever you need right now god will give it to you whatever is your need now just surrender it to the living god and watch him do it for you watch him do it for you 
You know, if you're busy and try, you may be busy trying to figure out, you know, how am I going to do all this? I got family coming to my house or I'm going and I've got to take this or that. And you're putting all these things together and you, you know, and you're busy with that. And you got to get this big bird ready with all these trimmings and you're looking forward to Black Friday shopping. There's so much work backed up at home. You want to take time to, to, to do it. Don't do that. Take time to focus on God and give thanks that you got all this. Commit to it and do it. That is worship. Worship God for his goodness. When you're cleaning that bird up to cook it, I thank you for this bird, God. And I bless all the people that's going to eat it. And I bless those that are preparing their birds this season. And those that don't have one to prepare, Father, I bless them as well. And I decree that somewhere, somehow, one is going to come into their life. Somehow, God is going to find a way. You're going to find a way, God. If you put anybody on my heart, let me be a blessing. Be a blessing, people of God. That is worship. Worship God for his goodness each day and every day of your life. The third thing is make sure your thankfulness leads to action. Make sure one heel leper came back. One caught himself in the midst of the celebration and returned to Jesus. He reversed his steps, put his family on hold, put the priest on hold, and came back to the cause of his celebration. His response and life situation was unique, but in the simplest sense of what he did, his thankfulness led to action. And boy, did that turn out to be important. Where are the other nine, Jesus asked. Do you realize what Jesus, that what this says? Jesus said, go and show yourselves to the priest. Jesus never commanded that any of them express thankfulness of God or return to him, the healer. Nevertheless, that is what Jesus expected. What kind of action is Jesus looking for from you today? What is he looking for from me today? You know, has God's Holy Spirit been urging you towards some action step? Had the Lord been tugging at you for some for some time now for a step of faith? Has the Lord been quietly speaking to your spirit to make changes in your life? Is there a family, a friend, or even a stranger in need of help this Thanksgiving season? Is there something you feel compelled to do? Use this season as an opportunity to intentionally start living in a life of thankfulness, making Jesus the focus. My best, best advice to you today, based on what Jesus was looking for 2,000 years ago, is to take that step of action. Assume God is pulling you toward that area of or, 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 or that action to get alone with him, to get it done. Otherwise, a prayer over the Thanksgiving meal will last about as long as the sensation of fullness after the meal. I don't know about you, but no matter how thankful I get on Thanksgiving Thursday, I always manage to still want to eat again Friday. We're hungry again. Shouldn't our spirit of thankfulness last longer than that? Get it done. Be thankful today. And the fourth thing is a lifestyle of thankfulness is a lifestyle of wellness. Look at the scripture again and walk with me through this. We're going to look at three different words that are all trying to say the same thing. They're all saying that this leper used to be what this, that this leper used to be is well. Everything that he used to be is now well. Now look for, at first at verse 15. One of them, when he saw he was healed and stopped there, the Greek word is hihatha, which is purely a medical term. It means to mend, to repair. It's, it's like a broken bone finally mending. This guy will get all was, was all patched up. This guy was now healed. Look at verse 17. Jesus asked, were not all 10 cleansed? Stop there. This is the word. This is a different word than hayatha. This is hatharizo. Okay. The root word for our catheter. It is too a medical word in part for it means remove the impurities. That's what you put a catheter in to do. When a doctor inserts a heart cath, angioplasty might remove a blockage of an artery. It will cause healing. Naturally, the Jewish connotations of this word are important too. To be cleansed was exactly what the priest would be looking for and would declare it carried some religious overtones too. So, and now look at one more word in verse 19. Jesus says to this very thankful man, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. That's a different word. It's not a medical word necessarily, although it, it was used to describe the safe delivery of a baby. This is the word so-so, which means saved. It means saved. The Greeks used it for people who escaped uh, dangerous situations. Sailors surviving a storm at sea had been saved. They say zozo. 
So when Matthew began his gospel, he started with the Christmas story. The angel told Joseph to name the Christ child Jesus because that name meant that he would save people from their sins. He would zozo the people. When Paul described what would happen to a person who publicly professed Jesus as Lord and Savior, he used the same word. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you will be saved, Zuzo. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved, Zuzo. Romans 10, 9 through 10. And Jesus says to this very thankful man, willing to follow God before his circumstances change, to worship God before he returned home. Jesus pronounces a complete healing, a wellness that passes all other wellness terms. This man, Jesus said, understands. Do you understand what God is saying to you today? I don't care what's happening to your body. I want you to understand more about our wonderful Savior. Remember that a priest must make a declaration for this leprous man to be healed. There were great details involved in this process. There were details of what a priest was to look for and how a person with the disease would be remitted to the, you know, readmitted to the community, healed and whole. It's a long process, but I'm telling you with one word from Jesus, they were healed. And I'm telling you today, whatever it is that you are going through, whether you felt abandoned and rejected, you're readmitted into your place of sonship, of daughtership. You're a son and daughter of the King today. That the zozo of the Lord is upon you today. Total healing for your body, your mind, your soul, your will, your emotions is here for you today. Today we have a day that we can be thankful for. Today we have a day that we can lift up the banner of faith that the ma a man named Naaman was cursed with leprosy. And he got healed. He got healed. Let me tell you by dipping seven times. I could go on, but we're going to stop right there and pray for you today. I'm going to stop right here. I want you to drop your prayer requests in here so that I could pray for you today. Okay. And let the goodness of God chase you down. I decree over you this day that the goodness of the Lord God is looking for you. The goodness of the Lord God is chasing you. The goodness of the Lord God is running after you. Run after him in Jesus' mighty name and be saved and be healed and be thankful in this season. Let us choose to be thankful in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let me pray over you today. I just lift you up, Carol, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I lift up Carol to you right now in Jesus' name. And I speak that word over you. You go and be well. You go and be healed. I speak that over you today, Carol. I decree over you that the living God will move mightily in your life, that you will see a change and you will walk with a greater sense of thanksgiving because it will come from a deep place. It will come from a place where only God could, uh, could have taken you to or that you could get to that place through the living God. And so I declare over you today that even as you, you shout with the thanksgiving, that the, 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 the trials, the tribulations, the attacks, the mind games are rolling away from you in Jesus' mighty name. I pray over Apostle Guy today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I decree right now that you are the healed man of God in Jesus' mighty name. Every level is normalizing now. Every level in your body is normalizing now. I speak life and life more abundantly. I release that the healing power of Jesus Christ, that, that he paid the price on that cross and said, by his stripes, you are healed. I release that into every part of your body today. I say every part of your body begin to uh, norm, be normalized and align with the word of the living God for you. I call it for now in Jesus matchless name. I say be healed man of God in the powerful name of Jesus. Healing is the children's bread and you will eat it. And I decree safety today. I decree uh, the anointing to come. I decree all levels normalized in the wholeness and the perfection that only Jesus can do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. He said, I receive it. And I speak over Adele today, right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak over Sister Adele and I decree that you have not begun to see the faithfulness of God in your life yet. You are just getting a measure of it. But the things that God has for you, the ears have not heard and eyes have not seen. I don't know if you're still on, but the things that God has prepared for you, you're going to walk from glory to glory to glory. It truly is the upgrade season for you. God is not upgrading you uh, physically, but he's upgrading you spiritually. 
as well as emotionally. This Thanksgiving is going to be a different one for you. You will show forth a different Adele. You will pray with a different power and the anointing will be released in a major way. Don't hold back, I hear the Lord say. Don't hold back. Don't let them see you in the way they've always seen you. Don't let them look at you the way they've always looked at you. Don't hold back, says the Spirit of the Lord. You go with the fullness of God because he's there and he will move and he will manifest through you in a greater measure than you've ever seen before in Jesus name. And Rachel, I'm not sure if you guys are on, but I'm just going to decree over you. Rachel, in the name of Jesus, I just lift up Rachel to you right now, Father. I lift up Rachel in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus, God. And I thank you for Rachel. I thank you for the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding that you've put in this woman of God and the great faith that you have put in her as well, Father. I thank you for that, God, in Jesus' name. And I say, God, that you will open those doors in this new season of life, that this is new year that you have stepped into. I'm not talking about um, 2023. I'm talking about 5783 in this year, this new year that you've stepped into daughter. Watch what God will do. He will use you and, and he will align you and your feet will be ordered to go where God is sending you. You're going to walk in places that you did not think that you would have gone. And I, I just keep hearing greater heights, greater heights, greater glory, greater heights, greater glory. But you know what? On, on the way, on the way to receiving all that God has for us, there's a road that we want to travel have less of because that road doesn't look good that road doesn't feel good but the spirit of the lord is with you on that road and he's moving in you through you and with you and in this new season you're truly going to see that manifestation of how god is going to move powerfully and you're going to see those doors opening the opportunities and you know so you've been saying you know i've been looking for this but what i've been, what i've been expecting and what i feel god telling me is not showing up the way i expect it to but in this season daughter expect the unexpected and watch god move and watch god do it for you in Jesus name, Akusa. I'm not sure you're still on, but father, we give praise for Akusa. Right now we give praise for her and we glorify your name for this woman of God. And we touch her right now in the name of Jesus, God. And we touch her family members. And I say, God, loose that fire, loose that fire. I just keep hearing that so many are expecting so much out of you. And there's uh, sometimes it can be a burden of all the expectations that is placed upon you. But God says, I've placed a, a mantle upon you, daughter. I want you to exercise the prophetic anointing to understand and discern the times and the seasons of what to choose to respond to and what not to respond to. And so, Father, I pray right now for Akusa that you will, God, show her the right way and, and give her the wisdom and, and, and the supernatural ability, God, to understand and to move the words, oh God, and the wisdom to bless and, uh, to, and to be a blessing, but not to feel so stressed and burdened and to be laden down, Father, for you have not given her a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. And we declare that over you right now in Jesus name and my friend uh, Apostle Harold our son I just I just want to pray over you I don't know if you're still on but I want to pray health into your body. Um, I, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will be so fully restored that you will come above and beyond expectations. Father, I thank you for this man of God. <coughs> this mighty man of God that you have released a fire and an anointing upon an accurate prophecy, an, ac an accurate prophet in, in the kingdom of God. I thank you, Father, for the word that is sharp in, in your mouth. I just see, keep seeing just a sword, a sharp sword in your mouth, uh, uh, Harold, Apostle Harold, a sharp sword in your mouth that even as you're releasing the word of God, you may not even know how many people it's touching, but it is cutting asunder and it is destroying yokes. And you know, and sometimes the enemy will come with an attack. But let me tell you, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but you're going to overcome them all. This is your season of overcoming. It may not look that way right now, but it is that way. I see you turning a bend. I see you going around the bend and going on this road and going around the bend of uncertainty and going around the bend of not knowing what's there, but going in faith because God has said, turn the corner. And when you turn the corner, you're amazed at the light and the wisdom and the strategies and the revelation that's being released to you. I decree that you will be blessed in the pulpit and blessed in the office. You'll be blessed when you come and blessed when you go. The supernatural ability of the King of Kings will be upon you to strengthen you. I decree your bones will, will move like dry bones rattling together and coming strong. Lungs clear, asthma disappearing in the name of Jesus. I decree health and wholeness over you. Man of God in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Evangelist Margaret, 
I, see, I just see you on there. Blessings to you as well. I decree over you today that indeed this is a turning point for you. I hear the Lord say the turning point. You have been through some tipping point seasons, daughter. You've been through some tipping point seasons where you could have been tipped one way or another, but because of your strong faith, because of your strong faith, you kept barely holding on to the hem of his garment. But God said, because you touched the hem of my garment, you are with us today. Because you touched the hem of my garment. And the Lord says, I'm coming into your home. Korobo sita tarabas. I just see a table and once it was empty and all of a sudden it is full. I see a table, a dining table and it was empty. And now all of a sudden it's a well laid out table. I thank you father that you will sup with her, that you will always provide for her, that the provisions of the Lord will always be upon your life. The provisions of the Lord is never going to leave you. I thank you, Father, for a sound mind. I thank you for a heart to praise you, for a voice to lift up the name of Jesus, for the for the spirit, oh God, of encouragement that you put upon her, God. In her darkest hour, you were there touching this woman of God. And I decree now, God, that even in the light season, she's still going to praise you. And even in the dark season, she's still going to lift up her voice and let it be a banner a loud banner, a clarion call that will go over the nations in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I hear the Lord said, I have need of you. There are people that nobody else can touch. I have need of you. And he says, daughter, even as you stretch yourself, because sometimes it is not easy to stretch, even as you stretch yourself forth to do what you don't feel like doing, to touch what you don't feel like touching, I'm going to move in the midst of this and you, I'm going to get the glory and well done, good and faithful servant, says the King of Kings and the Lord of of lords sister nina i'm not sure if you're still on but i just want to decree over you today what the lord is speaking over you and brother ray and madison father in the name of jesus i'm thankful for this family i give you praise almighty god for this family and i thank you that you are moving mountains for them and i hear the lord said the pressure may come because i see like a pressure cooker and and so it means like you're you, you get in a tight season and you feel like you're going to blow a fuse you know when the pressure cooker gets too much pressure to on it it will blow it and uh, release valve and sometimes you get the mess all over. But I hear the Lord say that I will be in the midst of the mess, daughter. Sometimes when it looks like you're under pressure, before you blow and a mess go all over the place, uh, allow me in because I'm the one that will clean up the mess and I'm the one that will show you. I have things yet still to show you. I have great things yet still that I desire to show you and I desire to work with you. And there are some keen keys that I want to release to you in this season, says the Lord. And I said, come away with me, God. Come away with me. I hear the Lord saying, come away with me. I hear the Father saying, come away with me. I want to release some keys to you. Come away with me. Make a time uh, to come away with the Lord and just to press in, just to hear, not to ask, not to do, just to thank and hear what thus said the Lord. And I believe that in the next season, you're going to see the mighty harvest of the King coming in. I thank you, Father, that you're a keeping God and you keep them, Father, and you will continue to keep them even as they diligently work. I hear the Lord say he's rest for the tired. He has rest for you even when you're tired. I have rest for the tired, says the Lord. Father, I decree over everyone on this line that this they will have a thankful heart, God, that they would move with thanksgiving and they will feel if they practice it every hour if you just take one minute out of every hour to just stop and thank God for something in the hour that he did in the last hour, just something, even the breath that you breathe, just thank him. Just take every hour. By the end of the day, your heart would be so merry that you would forget your worries. You would forget your trials. You would forget what ache you were feeling. You would forget what you didn't have. You would forget how, 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 how you feel like I'm the only one that's going through this, how rejected you feel, how abandoned, how angry, how tired. You would forget that. That. And you would be the one that a rejoicing would come. If we would practice that every single day, there would be a spirit of thanksgiving that would rain down upon us that even in the midst of the trial, we can say, okay, all right, God, whatever I need to learn in this one, I'm going to learn. And then you'll move right on. Father, I bless each one of them now in the mighty name of Yeshua. And I want to remind you all um, that we are doing the Thanksgiving drive. You can take a screenshot of that screen. It has the New Heart Ministries um, uh, giving portal, New Heart www.newheartministries.com forward slash, um, slash giving. And then you can choose the Turkey Giveaway Drive, or you can just simply go to Cash App, dollar sign New Heart Ministries and give a donation. This Saturday, you are going to be giving thanks by feeding 100 families this Saturday with us. When you partner with us, that's the impact that you're making. You're able to help feed a hundred families. All right. Now the pre-sale of this book is still on. We have a new, um, 
a new uh, slide coming up. I couldn't get it on StreamYard this morning. We'll get it on for next um, time that I come on. But uh, I, I know last week I shared with you all the little snafu that we had getting the, um, the printing thing and I had to choose a new printer. But right now I do have a new printer and, um, and the book he said should get to me in January. So I'm believing that it's going to get to everybody's hand by February. And so if you would like to purchase the pre-order is $25 still, the book is 30, 29.99. And, um, it's, you can cash out me at dollar sign Apostle Des, or you can message me at um, uh, empowering your own life at gmail.com. Empowering your own life at gmail.com. And when you send the cash app, also email me so I can have your name and address to mail the book. There's someone that sent the cash app, but still haven't given me their name um, to send the book when it arrives. And so I would like for you to, if you would do that, I would surely appreciate it. We need 39 more to reach the goal of 200. And so we're still, um, we're still going to run this, this special. And when we do that, I'm going to have a drawing with everybody. So I ask you today, if you would do that, I would certainly appreciate it. And um, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for that. May God richly bless each and every one of you. Have an awesome, powerful day on, on purpose. Father, pour out your spirit upon them, God. Give them peace in this season, Father. Release your fire. Release your anointing like only you can, Daddy, upon each and every one of them. Pour it out, Father. Lighten up their heart, oh God, their mind, their spirit, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray that you would do that now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have a blessed day. Love you all. Bye-bye.